age of 50. Now, it's a sort of given that good parents will love their children and do everything they can to keep them safe and healthy, prepare them for life in the adult world, and hope they'll be successful young adults of whom any parent would be proud. But, supposing they are a disappointment to you. They don't fly high and they're satisfied with just muddling along. They don't want to accompany you to the theatre because they think it's boring. And if you give them a book for Christmas, it lies unopened on the table. How do you navigate what may be a somewhat tricky relationship? Well, Richard Shorter runs a blog for parents called nonperfectdad.co.uk. Sue Elliott Nichols is uh, an actor who has sons of 22 and 17. Sue, how disappointed are you in your son? Do you know, I think it's not that I'm disappointed in them. I think you disappoint yourself because, you know, you have this tiny baby and, and, and nobody looks at their baby and says, oh, they're going to, oh, when they grow up, they're going to be, uh, you know, smoke too much and have a couple of failed relationships and a fairly average job. Everybody looks at their baby and says, oh, look at their hands. They're going to be a ballerina or those shoulders. They're going to be a rugby player. And we all put these, you know, these things on our children where we think that they're going to be remarkable and spectacular. And maybe they're just going to be normal, flawed human beings like the rest of us. But are you disappointed in your normal flawed human beings? No, because they've surprised me. I've disappointed myself because I've kind of had these kids and thought, oh, well, they're going to be, you know, they'll be really into theatre and they'll be really into to reading and we'll have all these. They've been completely the opposite of that, you know, but they've gone on and done amazing things that are not what I expected them to do. When my oldest son wanted to take a philosophy A-level, I said, oh, I don't think you should do philosophy. I don't think that's a very good idea. Ended up going to university and getting a degree in philosophy and running nightclubs while he was there and, and club promotion and all these things that were, were off my radar, you know, I, were not what I'd written for him when he was in his Moses basket. Now, Richard, uh, you have one son and two daughters. Yes. How disappointed are you in them? <clears throat> I think it varies from time to time. I think, I agree with Sue, I think sometimes that's a reflection of my own frustrations at perhaps putting my children on a pedestal that's been unhealthy. I certainly recognise those moments as a dad where uh, we're doing an activity that I am completely passionate about, maybe something to do with sport, for example, and, and that's not interesting them. And, and that inner sense of, oh, I, I kind of hope that, that you would want it to follow in my footsteps. I kind of hope that you would have wanted all my wisdom on this topic. Um, and I think for me, it's about just being honest internally and saying, actually, this isn't kind of how I, I'd planned out um, how my child would or wouldn't uh, have enjoyed this activity or this interaction. Uh, and instead of getting frustrated with myself and getting frustrated with them, start to try and see the, the good in what they're trying to do and the good in their unique characteristics and character. It's a terribly loaded word, disappointment, oh, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Is it a word you would ever... I, I, I know you're on the radio and they mm, can't mm. be listening. I mean, is it a word that you would ever, ever use in front of your children? No, I wouldn't. And, and I think it's not so much that they disappoint you. I think you sort of disappoint each other as well when they hit the teenage years, when they're sort of suddenly like, oh, you're not the amazing, cool, fantastic mother that I thought you were actually you know you're quite bad at getting up in the morning and you're quite bad at this and you're quite bad at that and you see them and you're like how can you lay in bed until three o'clock on a sunny afternoon you should be out to, and I think you sort of you, you go through a little phase where you kind of realize that, that you're just normal people all of you and that you have really bad habits as well as fantastic ones I, I know at some point Richard it was pointed out to you that you seem to favour your son over your two daughters. Yes, I was, I was in a conversation with a, a very good friend recently and they pointed out to me that I, um, I was only talking about my son more regularly in those conversations I was about my daughters. And that, that, that shocked me a little bit uh, because my love for each of them is, is, is very strong and very continuous and very proud of what each of them are doing. The context for those conversations with that friend were, were around sport um, and my son certainly connects with uh, rugby. I enjoy rugby. I work with a lot of rugby sports teams. Uh, I have a privilege of working in, in many famous rugby sports teams uh, and so there's probably a more natural set of conversations with my son that happen around those conversations uh, than happen with my daughters 
Um, but I certainly, I don't think I'd ever use the word disappointed with my girls to say I'm disappointed you're not into rugby. And actually my eldest daughter, who, who doesn't play rugby, surprised me uh, this February by saying for her birthday treat she wanted to go and see the England women play. And it, we, we went and had a great day out watching England Wales at, at the stoop together. And that was her choice. We didn't kind of push that on her. And even this morning she was explaining how much she'd enjoyed the day and got from that day. For, for me, I don't think it's about necessarily using the word disappointment, but I think it's about exploring why your child does or doesn't want to engage with something and why you feel that they should or should not. And realising perhaps the body language and the pressure that can come when your child says, actually, I don't want to play this musical instrument anymore. I don't want to, to be in the cricket team anymore. And being aware of what you're putting on your children in that. I, I think if I was being honest, some of their behaviour sometimes disappoints me. And, um, and sometimes there's an honest conversation around, actually, I'm not happy about that. Um, the, the, like you say, I think the word disappointed is is a very loaded, a very loaded word. There, there is clearly a, a gender element here, and I, I like you have two sons, yeah. and there are certain ways of behaving that that guys do together that it's really difficult for a mother to break into. What what sort of things do you wish you could have more in common with your son? Well, uh, I know exactly. Well, I, firstly, most importantly, I really wish that they like going to the theatre. And sometimes I think they might like it more than they think, but they sort of do it just to annoy me. And so I have to try not to show how annoyed I am by it. And, you know, my youngest son would just never read. He loved being read to. And when it got to the stage, I stopped reading to him so much. He sort of and I, and I thought, I know you're doing this to annoy me because I know you love stories and you love films. And so somehow you have to sort of take this deep breath and walk away and not show that you're disappointed because that will just make it worse. So what advice would you give to other parents about how to deal with the conversations that need to happen when you just don't want to say... I really don't think you ought to do philosophy. <laughs> I think I just said that, actually, Jenny. I don't think I put it very well. I said, I don't think, yeah, I don't think you're like that. But he was very adamant that he was going to enjoy it. I think, I suppose, you just... What I tried to do was, like, the power of suggestion. So say they wanted to give something up, you know. I mean, they've done a million things, a million things. And actually, that's really good, isn't it, that you try all these different things yeah, about you your childhood. Yeah, to make their own choices Yes, as well. yeah. And, you know, one of my sons said, oh, he, the oldest son, he wanted to stop playing rugby. So I sort of said, oh, that's a shame. You're really good at that. And I tried to sort of put it like that so that maybe he'd go away and think. But that didn't actually work. He still gave up. I think, I think for me, certain things to avoid, avoid labelling your children, oh, you're my special rugby player, you're my brilliant rugby player, so that then when they do want to stop playing, you're my great ballerina, that, that actually there's that real, f oh, crumbs, I'm really going to let mum and dad down. You're that, right, one point. of my kids wanted to give up at rugby. He gave up for a while. He said, oh, do you think that's going to disappoint dad? It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no, he's going to be delighted to get a lane on a Sunday yes, morning. Won't, I didn't tell him He that. won't have to he stay there in the wet and the cold, cold yeah. watching. But, but for me, I think I try and focus my parenting, encouraging the parents who come to my sessions to focus on, on character. So... Uh, so my children all do lots of hobbies and when they come out of those hobbies or when they're finished success I, instead of praising the, the award or the medal I try and point out you showed great determination you showed great resilience there I really love the way you problem solved how to get yourself into that position so that when they come to you and say actually I'm thinking of doing philosophy you can then hand on heart say do you know what I think you've got the determination to make that a success how might that work for you in the future so that you're then hooking in to parts of their character which they display in the activities you really love them doing and you can carry on that conversation about character that flows into the conversations you're you're less keen on. If only I had learned to talk to my children in that way. I know. Gosh, we'd have, saved, we'd have saved a lot of brows. Richard Shorter and Sue Elliott Nichols, thank you both thank you. very much thank indeed you. for being with us. Now, last week, we had an email from Rosalind Henry. She's a regular listener.